Let me begin by saying I like the Bugatti Cento Dieci. An homage to the legendary Bugatti EB110, it does have some big shoes to fill. There has been different opinions on the latest creation from Bugatti. The styling isn't to everyone's taste. The focus of the debate seems to be on the front of the car, the fascia. It's like a squinting Chiron with a smaller mouth, someone said. It looks like a Chiron with a body kit, wrote another. To me, the reason I like this design is the fact that it doesn't look like any other car we've seen before. Yes, there are hints of the Chiron, especially when it comes to the proportions of the car, but the styling is new. The fact that a lot of people find it strange looking in the front is just proof to me that Bugatti did a great job celebrating the EB110. Because in case you haven't noticed, the EB110 has one of the most peculiar faces of any car. It looks cross-eyed from some angles, the headlights being too narrow to each other. In a sense, it's annoying because it would be such an easy change to move the headlights further apart. But it's a piece of art. It's supposed to invoke a feeling when you see it. Just like a Picasso painting, the pieces are all there, but not always where you'd expect them to be. This is the case with the Cento Dieci as well, although it's toned down a bit from the EB110. The grille looks too small, the headlights too narrow and they seem to be sitting too high up on the hood. The angular lines and styling is unfamiliar with modern Bugatti. My favorite part of this car is the circular air intakes right behind the side window. Not only are they perfectly modernized design feature of the EB110, but they instantly reminded me of the front thrusters of the Atlantis space shuttle. And that's not a bad thing. These unusual design features wouldn't be easy to change, but why would we do that? Why would we make something unique conform into a design which we're being fed visually every single day in every other car that's on the street? You wouldn't rearrange the composition of a Picasso painting. Art is not about imitating reality. Art is about invoking a feeling. When we look at the Cento Dieci in that light, it all seems to be right. And that's why I wouldn't change a thing. But for the sake of having some fun in Photoshop, let's just quickly see what happens if we go against everything we just said and redesign the front of this car. If that's something you'd like to see, then feel free to stick around. Now, I have to say, it feels a little bit wrong taking this beautiful piece of art and adding a little extra to it when it doesn't really need that, if you know what I'm saying. But what we're going to do in this redesign here, it's not really a redesign, but it's more of a modification. I'm going to focus on the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the issue that a lot of people seem to have with this. Not, it's not an issue, but the, the art piece, the, the artsiness of the car, if that makes sense. The thing that people, that grabs people's attention sometimes for the, the reasons that it doesn't look right and sometimes for the reasons that it looks awesome. And to me, I think it looks awesome. It does look a bit off and that's exactly as I said before. That's the whole point of this car. So let's just see what happens if we move this down, for example, here. And what I love about this redesign one detail that I absolutely love about this redesign is that if you look at the EB110, you have these air intakes right next to the headlight. So the headlights is centered and then you have the air intakes on the, on the outside of the headlights. And that I just love that they implemented that in this car right here. And they did it beautifully with this line right here this little slit that goes there this is to me if you were to modernize the eb110 
this is what it will look like. I, will, I, I, don't, I don't feel like I need to change anything. And I love this part. It's almost like a GTR line here. It has this little dip up here, if you can see it, to the corner. And that tiny little detail just makes such a huge difference. And then you have this line going here into this corner right there. And of course, this front grille is straight inspiration from the EB110 with the smaller Bugatti arch right there in the front. So now that we moved this down, what we want to do now is obviously do the same on the other side. So let's do that real quick. So here's what we did so far. We started at this point right here and then we just moved the headlights down a bit and I want to clean this line up right here. And then what I want to do now, one of the other uh, things that people said was strange with this design was that the headlights themselves were too small. The slit for the headlights are too narrow. It looks like it's squinting. So we can uh, play around with that and uh, make it wider and let's see if we do that what happens with the design if it actually makes it more normal like everybody seems to be looking for everybody wants and uh, wants to look at something that they're familiar with if some if a car company comes out with something that looks unfamiliar uh, usually the first response is always negative because it shows something that people haven't seen before and uh, cars we always relate to what we know and the same goes with cars and car design so if we see something that that doesn't seem uh, that that uh, that seems out of the box the first reaction is usually negative and people don't like it so I understand that but at the same time I think it would be so boring if uh, all the car companies just follow the same mold and tried to create the same kind of styling over and over again. I think we have too much, we have enough of that already in today's car world. So when Bugatti made this one right here, with the squinty eyes and with the with the inspiration from the EB110, which was a weird looking car, I think it's 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 a great looking design. This from from stock. I'm just doing this these changes to see <clears throat> what it is what it would look like if we followed the mainstream and uh, made these changes to please uh, whoever thinks this looks off and, and change the things that they do think is off so I am not a huge fan of making these uh, headlights wider it just looks even more off now and not in a good way so I'm going to try something else. I'm going to try and open this whole area up more and uh, redesign the headlights and see what comes out if we do that. So I think the the deal here with the uh, Cento Dieci is that it has such an unusual face that people are not used to. So when when you're presented with something like this and you have no idea you have your you have your mindset on what to expect from previous concepts and previous models of Bugatti in this case, and then when they release something like this that's that's totally new, it's kind of a shock to the to the to, to the, the the visual aspect of what you're seeing that the first impression or the first reaction is usually a negative one. But when it comes to cars like this, like the like the Cento Dieci here, I think this is going to be, this is one of these cars that's going to become better and better looking the longer we get used to seeing it. We're probably not going to see a lot of them on the streets, but it's long, the, the longer we, we, we uh, let our mind get used to the, the front fascia of this car, because it, I think it's a beautiful looking car even though it has these squinty eyes and the, the tiny little uh, Bugatti arch down there in the bottom, I think, I think it looks really great. Because if you look at the EB110, it has the same kind of features. And I remember first time seeing the EB110. I can't remember how old I was, but I thought it was 
I thought it looked like the, the weirdest looking front end and I couldn't figure out why would they put the headlights so narrow and tight to each other. It just didn't make sense to me. But over the years, it's become one of these special designs that that's truly unique and that, that is truly a car that will stand out for the rest of time because nobody else did something like that. Everybody stuck with the conventional graphical elements and the placements of them in the front uh, on the in the front of the car. And that's really what I like about the Centurici is that it has this this one design feature which is the headlights that is one of these things that it's it's kind of it's bugging you when you see it. it it's something you want to change. It's like Let's take uh, the Alfa Romeo Disco Volante. Let's take that for an, as an example. If you if you know that car, I'll show it up here. Uh, it has this. It's a beautiful looking car, but it it's also one of these cars that that's a piece of art that either you kind of like it or you don't, and that's exactly what you do when you see a painting. You either love it. Usually, it's very po art can be very polarizing. It's either you love it or you hate it. But the Disco Volante is a beautiful looking car and one of the design features of that car uh, which is similar to the to this Bugatti here is the line that crosses through the front wheel arch and that line is just some one of these lines that you want to go in and just fix the arch so that it's a circle and not being cut by this line but then when you see how this line continues all the way around the car, it, it makes sense. And it, you, can, you can understand why they did that to, to, the, to the design of the car. On the other side of this spectrum is you have cars that just are plain ugly. And <laughs> the design doesn't make sense, even though the lines are, are, are weird and uh, uh, stuff doesn't really seem to be in the correct spots. That's not really art. That's just you know weird uh, randomness. For example, the Pontiac Aztec. It it doesn't have any line fluency in it at all. It's just a bunch of lines, not going anywhere, and a bunch of different graphical elements. It doesn't seem to be connected in any way. Uh, but at the same time, that's such a unique car as well. So. The uniqueness and the ugliness of that car actually made it into a car that you will remember. And everybody knows, I, I think everybody knows, I'm not sure if you're not into cars, but if you mention a Pontiac Aztec, everybody knows that as the ugly, one of the ugliest cars ever made. And it kind of made a name for it for itself by, by being so ugly. So I don't know, it can be a positive and it can be a negative, but in the end, these are all just cars. And the more weird the car is, to me, the more I enjoy looking at it and the more I respect the decisions made behind actually designing cars like that. So one thing I noticed here with the redesign when I was doing this is that these air intakes on the side of the, the headlights, those are actually, I think those are tunnels going from the front and then just that's where the air flows through the front bumper. And I had it inverted when I started this modification here. But then I went back and looked at the EB110 and I could see that it's actually sloping from the top down and not from the front to just stopping somewhere in the middle of the hood. So I had to change that and all of a sudden everything just made sense. But that's the, that's the idea I'm going with here is to create more of an EB110 graphic in the front. So we have the headlights uh, being more conventional and we have the air ducts on the side being in line with the bottom of the headlights. So you have the same line going there. And of course the function will be the same as on the EB110. So you have the line flowing through the bumper up through this vent and over the hood of the fender. I felt that this redesign was really hard to do. And it, it's like taking a, uh, it's, it's very easy to redesign an ugly car. If it's straight up ugly, it's very easy to make it semi okay to look at. But when you have a car like this, that's actually a piece of art, it, it's very hard to redesign it into something, something else than what it is. Because what it is, it's had such a strong personality already in its design. So 
changing something is going to set everything else off and you kind of ruin the the uh, the overall impression the designers intended you to have when you first see this car if you change just a tiny a detail such as the front wheels. See, I had some issue with this redesign didn't really know where I wanted to go with it uh, when I compared it to the rest of the car but it was still fun it was still a challenge to do this uh, gentle DHG and see what we can come up with if we just change a bit in the front so that's the redesign slash modification of the front end of the Bugatti Cento DHG I did not think this was necessary to do I think the original looks better than this it has a better flow to it and also has more of that artsiness that is Bugatti design. Bugatti is nothing but, it's, it's not a uh, conventional brand. Everything is special about Bugatti. I think the design should be as well. It shouldn't follow the norms. Anyway, thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to learn how to sketch, you can check out my courses down below in the description where I also have my Amazon shop where you can check out all the tools that I use to create these sketches. I'm the Sketch Monkey and I hope to see you in the next video. Take it easy.